Thank you very much, Vincent. I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation um, to speak here in the Zoomina. Um, um, today, I would like to present a result um, or some work, um, which I did together with um, Marcelo, Marcelo Alves, uh, Lucas da Hinten, and Abro Pianapazov, who is in the audience. And um, so we studied, or we study the topological entropy, uh, a measurement of a dynamical system, which has many interesting properties. Uh, and uh, its relation to the C0 distance, which I will also introduce on contact forms, uh, and hence on rate flows. And so a distance of a very geometric origin. So let me start um, somehow with a motivating example, um, where both notions, at least hidden, appear. So let's take uh, two torus with a bump. I don't specify exactly what the bump is, but it means we have a disk. And um, so the distance, the maximal distance from an interior point to the boundary is rather large compared to the length of the boundary. And um, so this gives rise to a lot of interesting um, dynamic properties of the geodesic flows, a lot of um, uh, various types of geodesics uh, one can detect. It was studied in the 80s um, by Bialy Poltorovich and um, Poltorovich and also Bungert and by others. And I want to, um, so for example, we have the following. So we have this oscillation um, pattern. And so let's go to the universal cover. So this is the universal cover. And um, go in one direction, take a non-contractible curve, lift it, go in this direction. And then each time I pass the bump, I can decide if I go below or above. And as I decide, I have a geodesic going in this direction. So I have someone exponentially many of these geodesics respect to length. And um, so they're chaotic kind of feature, but also in some sense controlled. Yeah, I have a coding of my geodesic. And this kind of interesting uh, feature um, is robust. Um, I don't say exactly what I mean, but as long as I mean, whatever I do, as long as I keep the bump or I don't change the bump too much, I have the same pattern. Maybe, I mean, cannot really relate the geodesics. So I, I don't know how the geodesics change, but this pattern will persist. And this is somehow uh, this kind of phenomenon we will, um, in some sense, um, see in more general um, setting. So I want to now uh, state the result. For that, I want to introduce the, the, the characters. So, um, so we, we look at the C0 distance on contact forms. So in our notation, Y is a closed coined context three manifolds. We will only be in three dimensions, although the questions and uh, I mean the statements make sense in higher dimensions, but our results uh, will be in three dimensions. By R, we, um, we denote the set of contact forms supporting defining psi. And uh, R, because we think of it immediately as, uh, as a vector field. Um, so uh, we, we, uh, we um, associate to alpha derivative vector field, which is defined by these equations. And um, and by and this gives us the rate flow. Um, so phi alpha will be the, the rate flow, phi alpha t rate flow. So every contact form gives us a flow. And we have now the following rather 
uh, we have the following um, distance. So if I have two forms, one I can write in as a function of the other. So kind of it's a graph of the other. And then I uh, take a tube around alpha and try to find the minimal width such that the, the graph of beta is inside alpha. And then I naturally I get the distance so if the function is one, I want the distance to be zero. So I take the logarithm. So I take the maximum log uh, absolute value of the logarithm um, to be my distance. And um, okay, so there are um, many related distances. Uh, there are related distances. The, the contact banach nazo distance which um so which is basically um i already i allow to act by contactomorphism on alpha and then take the infimum over all distances so this um in some form um so this has very a lot of variations uh, for geodesic um for, for Riemannian matrix for symplectic domains um and this goes back to Ostrov and Poitovich, and then um, was studied by many authors. So mostly it is studied in the by, for questions um, um, in large scale, to understand large scale geometry. So our, our results will also hold for the contact banach massu distance um, um, quite naturally, um, but we prefer to call it a C0, prefer to look at it as a C0 distance. And the famous cousin of this distance is the Hofer distance, which is um, much older. Okay, so we have similar thing for, for um, metrics. So if we take a surface, then we denote by big math the space of Riemannian metrics on S. And we get the metric denoted by d hat, the, the upper bar, which is um, the logarithm of the maximal dilation of vectors, uh, the logarithm of the absolute value. So here's an example. So we can, here's an example of what we can do. Say we have a flat part, and it's not hard to see whether we can, um, for example, elevate this. So we, we elevated this can round the corners, and this is uh, can be made very small in the C zero distance. So by perturbation, the C zero distance we can create, for example, cross geodesics of arbitrary small length. Uh, and um, so it's quite flexible in this sense. In this sense. Um, and this is actually the same distance if we naturally identify um, to a metric, a contact form, such that the geodesic flow becomes the rate flow. Um, so then we get, um, this is actually an isometric um, method. Okay, the other, um, the other, um, um, important notion in our uh, result is the topological entropy. Um, here, uh, for the for flow, it is defined as follows. So we take an auxiliary uh, distance function. Um, if you have two numbers, T delta, you say that the subset in M is uh, separated, T delta separated. If for any points, PQ and the set that are distinct, we have that the maximal distance along the flow of these points is bigger than delta up to time t. Um, then we take the, the maximal uh, cardinality of t delta separated sets, which we denote by n delta t. The exponential growth of this growth rate of this number in t is the delta entropy. And uh, the topological entropy is the limits, limits as delta goes to zero um, and is independent of uh, the auxiliary distance. Um, so 
uh, to have a picture in mind, let us look at the first example. We have this oscillating pattern of geodesics. So now uh, lift them, uh, the geodesic lift them as trajectories for the geodesic flow. And then it is, um, it needs a proof, but it's uh, uh, not so hard to see that these geodesics form and uh, form separating sets. Um, um, that, that, uh, that with the length, um, this, the number of um, the geodesics and separating sets grows exponentially. So we have this um, separation. This is an example. So there we have positive entropy in the bump, bump metric on the top. So our result says the following. Um, so for any contact manifold, contact free manifold, uh, we look at the topological entropy as a function on the contact forms. Yeah, so each form you get the rate flow, and hence the entropy. And this functional um, um, is lower semi-continuous um, in this C zero distance on a C infinitely open and then set. A few remarks. So, uh, okay, first of all. Um, we mean by lower semi-continuous on a set, we mean this set, uh, uh, the, lower sem the, the points of lower semi-continuity, um, the set of points of lower semi-continuity contain this set. So on, on each point in the set, uh, the, uh, the function is lower semi-continuous. Lower semi-continuous means that, um, this equation means that if I perturb a bit, I don't um, drop too much. Yeah? Entropy doesn't drop. So I want to remark that this is not at all, I mean, this is very geometric uh, statement. Just for flows, for general flows, I cannot really expect that. Um, I, mean by, I mean by that that, I mean, if I perturb my form in C0, I can, I mean, I have this image, uh, this image of the graph, so I can have a lot uh, strong oscillations of the second form, and uh, this means that uh, the direction of the rate vector field can drastically uh, change. Um, so I have no C zero control um, if I perturb in C zero the form, no C zero control on the vector field. So my um, in, my methods in dynamical system, usually the general methods dynamic system, don't give you uh, some robustness. So this is um, this is kind of um, interesting. Okay, so are there some questions on this um, result? Okay, another remark is, so of course, um, C0 open and this set. <clears throat> so we prove um, lower semi-continuity also on some uh, metrics which are degenerate because it's a C infinity open dense set. But also um, we cannot say uh, we cannot uh, say for any non-degenerate metric, uh, any non-degenerate form, we we don't know um, in general if it's a point of lower semi-continuity. Yeah, so this um, I will say more about this set of uh, this infinite open dense set. But I mean, it's, we don't know if it, it contains all uh, non-degenerate um, forms. But for geodesic uh, from for metrics, we can do we we know. So for metrics, we have um, following result: um, if met and the denotes the non-degenerate matrix on the surface, then uh, the entropy is lower than continuous um, on this set. In addition, it is also lower semi-continuous on the C infinity open and dense set, um, like in theorem one, but also on the non-degenerate.
I want to give some further um, results or some further instances where we know lower semi-continuity in the C0 distance. For that, let us restrict to the tight three sphere. And uh, there's the following notion of Gs. Uh, so uh, our flow is called right-handed um, if all the trajectory is linked positive. I don't say exactly the exact definition, but this means in particular that the periodic orbits, if I take a pair of periodic orbits, they have positive linking. And G is proved stronger linking positive. Uh, if the flow is right-handed, there is even a stronger linking uh, linking uh, condition or a nice condition, which is a global surface of section. So every every periodic orbit actually is the binding of a global surface of section for right-handed flows. And recently, Floya Hinevich studied the right-handed flows for RIP, for, for the RIP case, and um, they found this nice condition. So for geodesic flows, if, if um, we have a pinched metric, delta pinch is a certain constant, then the, uh, the flow lifts uh, to a flow on S3 that is right-handed. The geodesic flow. And uh, delta pinched means um, so delta. Uh, if if the matrix delta pinched is the delta uh, if delta is smaller than the uh, the and the minimal Gaussian curvature divided by the maximum Gaussian curvature. Okay, so our uh, our corollary of the here not formally by the statement but. Um, core of the proofs is that um, the entropy is uh, functional is um, also lower semi-continuous uh, with respect to this distance on the set of right-handed forms. So by Florio and Yevich, um, if I have a data pinch metric, I'm also lower semi-continuous on that. Um, and the final corollary. So we studied for geodesic flows, we studied some robustness of entropy also before. And it turns out that we are somehow in a complementary situation now with our techniques, as in the techniques that we, um, that we use there. And here um, we can say that for every metric on T2, so now just the torus, for any metric on T2 with positive entropy, uh, there is a small um, neighborhood of the metrics such the entropy stays positive for all forms. So this is a bit weaker than laws in continuity, not a bit. I mean, it is it's weaker. Um, um, but uh, it holds for all metrics on T2. So with all that, I think it's justified to conjecture that the entropy is in general lower semi-continuous with respect to these two metrics. It is that so um, of course for Riemannian metrics, the conjecture uh, is implied by the conjecture for contact forms. Um, although the, the conjecture too is probably more, more approachable. Um, In further context, so the entropy for rate flows and contactomorphisms was studied by various um, people. Um, this is a list, but not um, not the entire list. And then um, for our methods, the work of Alves and Pianapazov is um, quite important, the techniques there. So they studied uh, for three dimension wave flows, um, some forcing phenomena, um, I will say a bit more later. Then, uh, yeah, then the, the robustness question was, um, came up uh, by a question of Portovich. So there was a nice conference in Lausanne where Lucas gave a talk and then um, especially this robustness, uh, this question about robustness in C0. Um, 
uh, was asked by Leonid, and there are some results already by Lucas, and also, as I mentioned before, by, by us, who flew in Berlin. Then um, for the related distance, the Hofer metric, um, we proved the lower semi-continuity um, on the group of Hamiltonian diffeomorphism on the surfaces. Hutching uh, extended that for air preserving diffeomorphisms. And um, uh, another um, interesting kind of parallel development, which is in which is in a sense related because um, as well as there as well as okay, um, um, okay um, so is is the is the study of barcode entropy and um, introduced by Ginelli Ginsburg and Gurel and um, here also there is no condition on on the underlying manifold on the complexity of the underlying manifold and um, one um, in uh, one um, gets for example um, that the low dimension the backward entropy um, coincides with the topological entropy so, uh, for example, the, the result of Matsukeli Ginsburg Gorel, where they study barcode entropy for geodesic flows and, and show this identity um, together with our result gives, gives the, the lower semi continuity in barcode entropy. Okay, so this was uh, um, um, somehow results in context, and now I would like to uh, explain a bit the methods. Are there questions so far? So I want to uh, discuss uh, two or three important definitions that, um, that we need. So the first is uh, the notion of hypertite in the complement of a leak. So if we have a contact form and a link of closed rayable orbits for alpha, that means a collection of periodic orbits, um, and um, so the, we say that the contact form is hypertite in the complement of L. If um, any disk that maps into the manifold, uh, okay, M is Y, um, and whose boundary parameterizes uh, parameterize a, a, a rape orbit, uh, this disk have inter has interior intersection with uh, the link. So there is a point on the disk in the interior that must also lie on some component of the link. Um, so for uh, rape orbits in the uh, rape orbits in the complement of the link, it means just that I'm not contractible in the complement. And um, for rape orbits in the component, it means uh, some. It means exactly that I need a, a more complicated definition. So example is if I have a global surface of section. Um, so if I have the binding of a global surface of section, global surface of section means that I that this link bounds it on surface, embedded surface, such that every point returns, every point in the manifold returns to this surface in positive and negative time. So then uh, in particular, the periodic orbits return to this to the surface. And um, if I'm not binding a disk, if I'm not bound, if the, the link doesn't bound a disk, so the surface, global surface section is not a disk, then I'm already hypertite. If I, bow, uh, if I have a disk uh, section, I add another orbit and I, I get hypertite. I get a link such that the form is hypertite in the complement of this link. 
So this is the major example that we, uh, um, yeah, that, that is important for, for our uh, results. And now we need another, um, other definition. It says something about, um, about uh, homotopy classes of loops in the complement of the link. Uh, so we say that a class is proper, proper link class, if um, there are no loops in representing this class that lie in the space more neighborhood of one component of the loop. Yeah? So every, every orbit has to link uh, stronger than just, just one component, yeah? Um, and uh, these two properties uh, allow to define the cylindrical contact homology. Um, so this is the work of, uh, this was uh, proved by Nomin that um, um, if alpha is hypertight in the complement of L and we have a proper link class and all orbits in Rho are non-degenerate, then one can define the symmetric contact homology. We will not use exactly this, uh, we will not use CH, um, in the proof, but we will use matters that that are important for the definition of contact homology. And the last uh, definition that then relates uh, relates us to entropy. So this is the following. Uh, this was um, considered by Alves Bernapasov first in 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 the complement of a link. Um, so we have now. Uh, first a uh, contact form alpha zero, uh, a link of tape orbits. We assume that alpha zero is hypertight in the complement of L. And then we look at the growth of uh, proper link classes. Now CH is defined. So the growth of proper link classes with non-zero CH. And the growth is in the period, in the, say in the, um, there are various, there are variants, but say the, uh, the maximum period of an orbit in world. And then the following inequality was used by Alves, was proved and used also by Alves Pianapazov, and this is um, also important, um, or some form is important here. So this, uh, this homotopical growth rate bounds the entropy from below. And um, so let me stop here a bit. So, because here one sees kind of the strategy that one has to take to prove um, results like of the kind um, I, I uh, told you. So here we have on the right hand side, the, the entropy. So uh, um, the, the quantity of interest and, but we don't really understand any behavior in C0 just by, by the usual um, um, characterization of entropy. But here we have the left-hand side, we have something where we have a chance to understand um, some uh, the, the behavior under um, change of contact form. But of course there are some issues. So first of all, if there's entropy, we don't know what the left-hand side is. So we need some, Reverse, reverse direction. We need to understand what is the growth, homotopy growth, if there's entropy, yeah? to have, in general, some lower bound. And on the other hand, this is kind of the, the, the point is that if I change alpha zero to some alpha, like the term in, in the C zero distance, say, um, first of uh, the first thing is maybe my um, growth is not defined anymore because I'm not hypertide anymore, but also the link itself does not have to be anymore a link of wave orbits. So I need a replacement of L by another link. And um, yeah, okay. So this is what we have to um, have to do. So uh, for the proof, it is uh, useful to go to restrict more the growth. So to look only at classes rho that carry one orbit. So this we do by omega. So this is a set of proper link classes that carry exactly one periodic orbit. And um, then we filter by, by the period. 
And then we get the growth rate, the exponential growth rate, which is clearly smaller than the gamma, the homotopic growth of cylindrical quantum tomology, assuming that everything is non-degenerate, we can define this growth. And um, okay, so the first step is the following: we um, we have a growth, so we have um, entropy, and we have the we have the this growth omega this omega growth growth of classes that carry exactly one orbit. Oh, I'm sorry, I was a bit confused. So we have positive entropy. And then uh, the statement says, um, uh, there is a link for any epsilon. There is a link such that the, the growth of these homotopy classes, the, um, the carry exactly one orbit, um, is bound from below by entropy minus epsilon. In other words, we can approximate the entropy by links, by 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 these growth rates of of a sequence of links. Yeah? So, I, or or uh, let's let's write it like this. So the the entropy is the supremum over the the homotopic growth rates. Uh, say over all links that are such that the forms are hypothetical in the complement. Um, whenever the entropy is bigger than zero, and of course, whenever I can define the right side. So um, I need at least one link such that gamma uh, L0 is defined. Okay, so I so this is uh, uh, a characterization of entropy for rate flows or for many rate flows um, on three manifolds. So um, just, um, okay, so this uh, a few remarks here. So this is um, one should compare Cartox result here, where one approximates the entropy for surface diffeomorphisms by the entropy of um, of Orschus, and in fact uh, some methods um, are used here that. Um, um, Katos uses, um, and um, especially one needs a 3D uh, flow version of that result. So there are var var variants of um, this Katos result for 3D flows. One is by Lian Yang uh, that I know, and then there is um, um, Lima Sari works work where they um, do, in fact, uh, much more, they uh, they get the coding by a countable Markov shift of, of a full measure set of of uh, positive entropy. Okay, now let's say a bit more about the links that appear here. Um, so these links, yeah, these links where you can um, where you get the growth, the omega growth in the complement, they consist of um, a couple of links, L0, L1, until Ln. Each of the links has three uh, components and bonds a pair of pens. So this, um, which is transversal to the flow, this is, a, uh, this is a, how it should look like a bit. And um, yes, so, um, yeah, so the, the, these are also called free surfaces. And um, so you can think of these rectangles, blue, this blue rectangle sitting in some um, Poincare section that I choose at the beginning. And the, the rest of the uh, the rest of the surface to be um, almost parallel, so perturbation of something that is parallel to the flow. So all this um, L0 until LK, each link bounds such a surface of section, uh, such a such a uh, such a feed surface. And I get actually um, 
so I, the, the surface of pair is disjoint and all intersect the one of them, the F0 surface. And I get a, a coding. So I get, um, if I if S denotes the, the set of um, um, M tuples for all M in N, then for each two tuples that are just uh, that if, that are um, different up to cyclic perturbation. No, for each tuple, for each tuple, um, I get I get uh, a, a class, a class row, and um, and um, yes. Um, and the orbit in that class I can describe. So it will ex it will intersect the surface F1 and Fn in the order um, as I as I prescribe this um, this topo. So each time it intersects some Fk, it also intersects F0. So F0. Um, so this is kind of the the, the rectangles here. So here have the here have this. Um, surface so each surface looks um, like this so then I have the rectangles here I have the picture only of the rectangles so I have the the big rectangle which is um, sits in the um, F0 surface and I have um, um, the n rectangles that um, blue rectangles that that sit in the um, so surfaces F1 and Fn. And um, the red the red rectangles, they don't sit in the street surface, but they are there are some some image and an iteration of the return from return map of the of the blue rectangles. So I so inside the, the big rectangle I get some Markovian intersection of the other of some parts of the other field surfaces. And um, yeah. So this are this is about the, the link. Are there some questions um, on that um, result? Okay. So I come to the main. So the, this was done in, in Bit earlier, but in um, in view of this project, motivated by this project, and now we come to the main uh, result. So it's a bit lengthy here. Let's start here. So um, our main uh, result that leads them to the to the to the entropy result. So we start with the non-degenerate form now. Before we, we the approximation theorem, we will need an assumption there. Now we start with the link um, of um, of orbits, and we have this assumption: alpha zero is hypertalic to the complement of zero, and we assume now that the growth, um, this growth which we uh, which we um, detected before, is positive, and now we perturb alpha zero, so we let epsilon bigger than zero. And then, if we perturb alpha um, so, uh, in, in a sufficient small C0 neighborhood, then we find a link L alpha um, satisfying a lower bound on this growth here, where here we don't necessarily here this uh, delta does does uh, does mean that means that we we look at classes which carry some orbit of length less than t. It doesn't have to be unique anymore. Yeah. So we start with the growth of unique classes in each uh, uh, classes which carry a unique orbit, and we find a link uh, for perturbed contact form that um, now has also some lower estimate on the on the growth that carry uh, growth of classes that carry orbits. So some remarks here. So this delta 
So this delta, so the size of the neighborhood is actually independent of the of the choice of the contact form outside um, outside uh, a neighborhood of L zero. As long as we are still hypertight and non-degenerate. So this, uh, yes. Yeah. So this is kind of good to. Okay, I say something later about that. Then the growth. So we get here. Um, yeah, we get here this growth here for L alpha uh, uh, for the new link, but the homotopic growth rate might not define, might not be very different. Yeah? L alpha, we don't know if it is hyper, if alpha is hyper to the complement of L alpha. And we even don't know if we can choose the new link um, isotopic to L0. Um, In particular, we don't know if it's isotopic uh, among transverse links. <laughs> and uh, moreover, it might even have more or less components. So we don't know if, uh, yeah, L alpha might have more or less components. What we know is the growth, uh, we have a good bound on the growth in the quantum. So having these two, um, these two statements, the approximation and the, the approximation of the stability. So this is our theorem that we want to prove, the, the, end, uh, the lower semi-continuity. Let me explain this, why it's lower semi-continuous continu on the C-infinity dense set. Um, I'm going to say something maybe on the, the open condition. So we, um, we assume Alpha zero is non-degenerate, and there is a global surface of section. So this was recently um, proved to be a infinity dense uh, condition by um, independent um, teams, and so we. So this means uh, this means okay. Take the union of this binding of the global surface of section. And the link from the approximation set. So adding to the binding doesn't uh, doesn't destroy my hypertype condition. And adding to the link from the approximation result doesn't change my my lower bound in the growth. So I have still this growth of uh, classes which carry one orbit. This lower bound, um, I drop a bit. Um, by epsilon half, and the stability result also I can apply, and I get um, I get um, a new link L alpha such that I have this um, new uh, estimate. I again drop a little bit uh, this growth estimate. This growth estimate actually bounds the entropy from below, so I get. Uh, Finally, this inequality. And now, okay, in the stability result, I had to assume that alpha is non-degenerate, but by a, by a dynamic result of Newhouse, entropy is C infinity upper uh, semi-continuous. And this means that uh, if I look at this definition, this means exactly that I can uh, extend from a C infinity dense set to to the whole set, so I can extend to degenerate. Um, and this is the, the lower semi-continuity. Um, so, um, yeah, are there questions? Okay, so the C infinity open that I can extend to C infinity open dense is um, uh, is the result that delta is kind of it has a local uniform. So this delta, this delta neighborhood um, um, is, uh, has some local uniformity um, condition. So then I can perturb and degenerate form 
um, to a non-degenerate form. And um, so in fact, we get, uh, so in fact, the condition that we are, we are lower semi-continuous is that we have a global surface of section with non-degenerate binding. And this is a, a C2 open and C3 dense condition. So we get actually C2 open and C3 dense. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the geodesic case, uh, why can we choose, why can we um, um, treat non-degenerate matrix? So this, um, here we can apply um, a result of Contreras, Knieper, Matsukeli, and Schultz, where they, dis where they uh, construct um, different methods with more ge geometric methods, not, um, without symplectic tools. Uh, surface of sections for um, geodesic flows on surfaces. And here we are in a good um, 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 position that, uh, because um, we, become, we get a binding such that all other orbits are linked with this binding. And um, the only we only need that G is non-degenerate, and then um, each um, binding, um, each binding component is contractible. Um, links uh, with we find another one can find another uh, orbit that links with this binding group. So also the binding is linked. Um, okay. Um, yeah, how much time I have uh, until ten past? We still here fifteen minutes. Sir. Okay. Now I can um, explain a bit. Um, the, the result and uh, the, the proof of the stability. So, um, so the setting is uh, again. I repeat: we have a non-degenerate quantum form. We have a link um, of gate orbits, and um, alpha zero is hypertight in the complement of the zero, and we have um, a positive um, growth of the proper link classes um, containing exactly one orbit. So now choose alpha sufficiently close to alpha zero in the C zero metric. And then we look at um, um, exact symplectic cobordisms. So exact cobordisms means that uh, we are in R cross of in R cross um, Y and far up in the in R we we we, uh, we are like a symplectization and far down we are also um, a symplectization. So um, especially we 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 want this cobordism to be um, the symplectization of alpha with some dilation outside some interval minus r and r, and inside the interval minus r and r, we um, require it to be the symplectization of um, alpha, okay? So now as r grows, we get more and more we stretch this neck region more and more, and we get a larger and larger part of the symplectization of r. And important, we we uh, important are the almost complex structures that we equip, uh, that we um, put on this uh, cobordism and they are cylindrical on the, on the, uh, with respect to this, this uh, symplectizations on the symplectization parts. Okay, so this is the setting. And then the first step is the four, right? So the first step um, for each R, the fixed R, we want 
So at the end, we want R go going to infinity. But now let's now uh, first fix um, R finite. Now we want to find um, a collection of finite energy holomorphic cylinders. Um, they are disjoint, pairwise disjoint, and are positive negatively asymptotic to the link. Or more precisely, we want the link has n component. We want n cylinders, each is positive and negative asymptotic, uh, asymptotic to one component. Yeah, this is the picture um, here. And with it, with this um, VR, this collection of cylinders, we want also, uh, we, we prove also that there's an isotopy bringing the trivial cylinder over L0 to VR. And this isotope is ambient. Yeah. And how do, how is the strategy to, to prove that? So for that, um, we, um, um, yeah, it's, we, we describe the, the par parameterized modelized space. Um, I mean, we, we take a homotopy of WR together with the almost complex structure from a basically uh, simplectization, modulation of the simplectization to omega R. And along this uh, family of almost complex structures, we describe, we, we ask, uh, we look at the modulized, the parameterized modulized space. Yeah? There's a pairs. S, U, and U is uh, holomorphic respect to GS, say, so the yeah. almost complex structure S. And um, okay, if one chooses uh, uh, the, the almost complex structure um, regular, and one can do, uh, then this is a one dimensional manifold. And the problem then is so, how do we get w uh, VR? We want to understand. Um, the component of this modelized space that that contains the the trivial cylinders or or a trivial cylinder, and then look at the second boundary component. So this is a boundary component of the modelized space, and then look at the second boundary component in WR. Yeah? Uh, and uh, this we can do if if we know that the modelized space is compacted and we know that it's an interval, and we can um, follow along this isotopy and find. Um, follow on this modelized space and find in WR um, our holomorphic curve. And the compactness um, there has to be, uh, we have to understand uh, different uh, bubbling and breaking uh, um, possibilities and uh, exclude them. So here we can do by action consideration. So here, if you see plus minus, if the relation is small enough, so if alpha is small enough to alpha zero, then we can choose C minus plus sufficient close to one, then we can exclude, I mean, respect to the smallest contractible, the period of the smallest contractible uh, wave orbit and the uh, distance from the action spectrum of the link to the next action. Okay? So in respect to that, we can choose C minus plus sufficient close to one, and then um, uh, the modelized space is compact, and we can go through and see the um, see the collection of cylinders in WR. And uh, positive intersection of holomorphic curves is used to to see that they stay disjoint, and um, and then we can um, use this family of holomorphic uh, curves in the modular space to build the isotope. Okay, so this is the uh, step. And why does it help to have this isotopy? This is let me explain um, a little bit. So now we do the same for curves in the complement. So we take class rho, proper link class, which carries only one orbit, yeah, in omega. And now um we again bit this uh, modelized problem, this uh, parameterized modular space with this uh, respect to this family of almost complex structures. And um, the good thing of the isotope, so the pro now we cannot 
do again an action argument because now uh, periods or the actions of this uh, the orbits involved they they can get arbitrary large so then the difference between the negative asymptotic and positive asymptotic also and hence uh, we need to use uh, this isotopy um, so um, to uh, to exclude bubbling and breaking. Yeah? For example, if, uh, let's say, uh, along a sequence of uh, holomorphic curves in this Morley space, we get, a, we get some bubbling. So we get maybe our, um, you see a finite energy plane that, that goes into the core bordism. So this is, um, Let's say we just use this. So here we have the things which come from the link. And say we see some, some finite energy plane uh, going here. So we can, by positive intersection, it will not, we can exclude that it intersects uh, this parameter, the, 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 the cylinder comes from the link. Yeah. But now we can choose, the, we can bring uh, we can we can uh, take the isotopy and bring everything back to the uh, basically simplexation where the where this 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 uh, link cylinder becomes uh, uh, becomes a trivial cylinder. Yeah. So also my my plane it's not anymore. Uh, holomorphic, but it's a plane. This plane, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> this plane. Um, let me, how do I draw the color? No, this is not good. Okay. Mm, so this plane becomes uh, also some plane here, and it will not intersect my trivial cylinder, but this. Uh, this I excluded. I mean, I cannot have a, a plane that doesn't. So if I project to the contact manifold, uh, I cannot have a, a disk which is asymptotic, which is which bounds a periodic orbit, but intersects uh, my link. Uh, it doesn't intersect my link. Yeah? So here I use the condition of hyperplane. Okay, and and other cases are treated uh, similarly. Uh, more or less. So then we can do the same uh, for this class's row. And I think my time is almost up. So just um, I wrap up. So then we uh, wrap up things. So then we pass to the limit. So we pass R to the limit and we get some, um, some building. And then we can also show that um, the first and last level, um, they are. Um, they're actually the cobordism levels. So we can, um, um, yeah, we have here alpha, alpha zero and uh, alpha. And then we look at one of them, either the top or the bottom level. We look at, the, we write it for the bottom level. And then the link will be um, all the orbits that you see uh, that, uh, in the limit. Yeah. So this is, this is the, these are the, the limit of, this is the limit of VR as R goes to infinity. And um, we take the, the in level, uh, yeah, we take the link that is that are the positive asymptotics, say, of the negative levels of this um, building in the limit. And then we uh, yeah, then we have to it's, we we use C frames asymptotic um, asymptotic properties of um, holomorphic curves to see okay although some like here the situation some um, curves might from different components might collapse to one component this situation um, we cannot exclude but it cannot be too bad so. The since we have exponential growth in the complement, 
there cannot be too many uh, components that collapse to, to, a, to a, um, one orbit. And hence, we still get the growth in the contract. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? And uh, can you, by this method, produce uh, metrics which are arbitrarily far? From metrics with zero entropy, let's, let's say in this banach mazur distance. Um, yes. Um, so on Riemannian metrics, um, you. So I mean, uh, not by these methods. Maybe I didn't understand your question correctly. So we we can introduce some bumps, and then we can. I mean, by by C zero well, perturbation well, uh, for metrics, maybe indeed bumps, and for uh, for contact forms. For contact forms, um... so let's say they start with the manifold on which I for sure know that there exists contact forms with zero entropy. Yeah. So there is for every contact form for every. Um, for every uh, context free manifold, I have a, um, I have a contact form uh, um, um, and an open book with a, a pseudo of monotomy. So I can always, so this is the result of Colin and Wanda. Um, so, and then I um, get uh, positive entropy. But okay, maybe it stays an easier. No, 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 but, but I want to have distance to metrics from zero entropy, arbitrary large. Ah, I see. Ah, now I understand your question. Um, no, the arbitrary large, we don't know. I mean, we, we know for metrics, yeah. We studied this for metrics, but for contact form, we didn't, we don't have examples. Mm -hmm. In principle, there is still an option that at distance 10, there is always metric with zero entry. Principle, yes, I think. Okay. Yeah, this is a uh, yeah, this is a um, good question. Um, yeah, one has to refine the methods to understand uh, large scale um, distance. Yeah. Thanks. Any other question? Yeah. It, it, do you have any idea on how to 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 say something about uh, metrical uh, entropy? Uh, uh, not metrical, metric entropy with symplectic method, or um, I know it, it's not really. There is a result that uh, okay. Marcelo, I think it's uh, hmm? but uh, yeah. Um, no, I I don't have a, I don't have a, no. Uh, the answer is no. But I just want to say that I, already, I think I already asked a year ago, but I was ah <laughs> uh, yeah yeah okay yeah this would be good to say something but. Uh, And um, so um, I remember that you have a so, so you have a similar result for a, um, a Hamiltonian diffeomorphism of surfaces, and um, so is is it a similar proof in uh, in some way, or can can you say can you comment on what's different uh, in this setting? Mm. So yeah, it's in several. Uh, aspects a bit different. So, um, so in um, in the Hamiltonian case, we really prove, for example, stronger statement. We prove that braid of an orbit, braid of a collection of orbits, um, assists as an 
isotope, um, in the isotopic class of braids. And um, the proof um, uses more the, the, yeah, we use the, the fluor continuation method. And this can be done because we, we really have to, for any non degenerate on different morphisms, we have uh, well defined uh, fluoromology and we don't have bubbling uh, uh, this, this problems that appear here. And uh, hence we get also this, this result. And then also things get, so here we have then as a weaker result, we cannot really get the link to the isotopic. Um, and hence we, and we cannot really define the con cylindrical contact homology all the time. So we have to do this um, limiting procedure. So this is different. And then also the, the dynamical, I mean, this approximation uh, statement that I said, this one also doesn't need uh, because, uh, yeah, it is, one can just look at the, if one has a braid that is complicated enough. Um, yeah, the various, yeah, one can, easily kind of see the, the growth of on pi one in the complement, I mean, how it acts on pi one in the complement. And if this is exponential, we know entropy and also the approximation is then easier. So here one really has to um, see like the, the different classes and, um, yeah, yeah, and that they carry only one of it. And so yeah, both, um, in, in this kind, in these two main points, it's different. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, I don't know any other question. And what happens with non autonomous contactomorphisms? Uh, seemingly kind of important object and uh, perfectly having entropy and things like this. Mm -hmm. um... Yes. Um, yeah, this is the, I haven't, I personally haven't um, um, thought about it too long and I don't know, one has to also, um, yeah, make the setup that one can see the orbits there. With the, the, or the or, I mean the object translate points or I mean the um, the, the periodic orbits there um, with these contact homology methods. So I know that one can use uh, Rabinowitz flow homology to um, to study entropy uh, of these uh, positive contact homomorphisms. And for example, Lucas had some results, but. Um, they always assume that there is some growth of Rabinowitz fluor homology and um, on the manifold, and then there is some robustness results. I think um, to remember, but in Rabinowitz fluor homology, yeah, we we uh, we don't know this uh, how 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 we could prove this uh, stability statement. Here it's very good that we have holomorphic curves and, uh, and um, not a flow equation. And, but it's plausible that it, it should hold, but we don't know how to. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so if there are no more questions, uh, thank Matthias again. And uh,